got our automatic fault association through and um, uh, it's, it's confused. It has a 40% chance of associating with the Malibu fault and 46% chance of associating with the Anacapa fault, which is not surprising this small an earthquake. You don't directly associate it with a big fault. Uh, um, Again, I'll ask several more people have joined, and remember that we're using the um, question and answer or the chat for um, uh, for questions. Um, I also see uh, Sue Hoff has joined. You might want to come in as a panelist. You aren't going to be able to speak from from where you are. Um, so we do have one question in from from Ron Lynn. Are we having more quakes recently? Um, yes. Uh, whether it's statistically significant uh, is is difficult to tell. Uh, I actually just went through a process of bringing up the last, actually, 65 years of magnitude fours. Um, if we look back over the uh, that time period and count the number of sequences with at least one magnitude four, um, that's very different than saying how many magnitude fours do we have because the biggest year for magnitude fours was um, 19. Uh, 92 because we had aftershocks to the Landers earthquake. But if we look at independent sequences with at least one four, over the last 65 years, the, it averages mm, eight to 10. Sometimes years, we have one that just had one, one year that had one, several with just two. Uh, the highest amount uh, was 13 in 1988. This is now the 14th. Um, uh, magnitude four plus sequence that we've had in Southern California in the uh, uh, so far this year. So yes, this is a more active year than we've had in the past. Um, but the uh, uh, um, it, it's not yet at the point of the problem with small number statistics. We can't quite say yet that whether or not uh, it is actually statistically significant to be seeing this. Um, Okay, I'll, there's enough new people in. I would also remind, again, scientists, if you want to be speaking, you need to come in as a panelist and not as a um, uh, as an attendee. So uh, please switch that around. Um, Sue Huff from the U.S. Geological Survey has joined us, um, uh, so she's going to be available as well. I'll give an overview of, of it, it of it uh, for people who just joined in. Uh, we have a uh, magnitude 4.7 that happened at 728 this morning. Uh, it's located about five miles north of Malibu. Um, the fault associator doesn't have a clear picture. This is not uncommon for an earthquake uh, this small. I think the uh, uh, to be uh, this size earthquake is a fault area of a matter of of 100 meters, maybe a few hundred meters. And that's going to be a small enough thing that's located at seven uh, miles below the surface of the Earth. Um, it doesn't need to be associated with a fault that actually comes through and is mapped at the surface. So the smallest earthquakes, it's not uh, um, uh, that obvious. There are some faults nearby. The uh, movement on the earthquake was horizontally. Um, as we in here in Southern California, we can either get horizontal motion or upward motion on a dipward fault. Uh, dipping fault. This is a, um, a, a the sideways motion, what we call strike slip motion in this earthquake. Um, so that's an overview. Uh, Sue, if you have anything to add about what's here now, please go ahead. We should add that. Hi, thank you. Yeah, we don't obviously. Sue, you're muted. You muted yourself. <laughs> You'd think I would know by now. Yeah, it, it's obviously early. We don't have a lot of, of information. It's curious, the best indication of shaking severity usually comes from citizen provided, did you feel it accounts. There are notably few contributed to the system for an earthquake that clearly would have been felt by a lot of people. It suggests to me there may be some temporary issue with the system, but shaking was felt out to a distance of about 100 kilometers or 60 miles, um, not strongly. It was relatively weak shaking that's been reported in the near field region. It might, may, should have been strong enough to 
maybe knock things off of shelves. We don't expect damaging shaking in the modern built environment for an earthquake like this. Um, but uh, clearly there's a lot more, more data to be collected. I, let's see, we have another question that's come in. Um, Okay, yes, uh, Ron points out there was another Malibu quake, also 4.6 back on February 9th. I've just been looking at those locations. They're not actually the same location. Uh, the, the February 9th earthquake was slightly south of Malibu offshore. This is a bit um, um, uh, north of, uh, uh, of, the, of the coastline and therefore a little bit north of the Malibu Fault, which pretty much runs along the coast at that point. Um, it is, however, right. We are having earthquakes. Um, none of them have been damaging. They've all been small. We need to remember that um, when you have earthquakes, you tend to have earthquakes. And because the relative number of large to small are the same, having some, something larger, we did have the magnitude 5.2 up near uh, just south of Bakersfield, of course, a, a little over a month ago. Um, this is a really good reminder that the quiet of the last couple of decades is not our long-term picture, and, and we do need to be prepared. I would, just to preempt these questions, uh, no, it's not related to the weather. Um, it's, uh, you know, when it's seven miles below the surface of the earth, the surface weather really does not um, make a difference. But the, um, uh, um, and also by slides, you know, we finally break the weather and then we get it, you know, that you're really stretching it if you're trying to make those correlations. So let's just remember to keep that out of, uh, out of the discussion, please. Um, can I jump in? There's there's two questions about the increase of seismicity. Is it is is activity up, which it sort of seems like it is, but then what does that mean? Is that ominous seismicity fluctuates? And seismologists have been trying to read the tea leaves for decades, looking for patterns that precede large earthquakes. And that's never really panned out. If if there is an increase, we can't, you know, really interpret that except for what, what Lucy said that when you have a lot of earthquakes, you have a lot of earthquakes, as Charles Richter said, that earthquakes increase statistically the odds of more events. So yeah, any felt event like this, they're great reminders to, to take all the steps that people um, probably know that, that are helpful. Thank you, Sue. And um, we have a hand up from Bob DeCastro. Um, Recording Bob, in progress. Okay, Bob, if you could please use the, uh, the Q and A function to ask your question. We will answer it there. And um, Lucy and Sue, we have another question. This is from L Ortega. Uh, we've gone over this. Which fault did this strike on? It sounds like it was not associated with one that we're aware of yet. Well, no, no, not put. Don't let's not put it that way. It, there are a couple of map faults in the region. We have about equal probability of it being on one of them, and the probability that it's not on any map fault. And I think we need to remember that an earthquake this small, the, air, the area that gets involved that moves in an earthquake is what controls the magnitude. And when you, uh, and so a 4.7, it's a, it's a matter of uh, a few hundred meters at most. And uh, and it's seven miles below the surface of the earth. It could be on lots of things. It could be on something that doesn't reach through to the surface. That's often the case with our smaller ones. But it is near, um, um, in uh, uh, you know, it is near some some known faults. The other thing is that you can't say it's um, uh, it, what what earthquakes it triggers uh, are not confined to the fault that it's actually located on. So uh, you know, we have some um, uh, slight probability. It's about five percent of earthquakes in Southern California are followed by something bigger. And the fact that it's not on a major fault or that it's not clearly associated with it uh, doesn't affect that number at all. Um, we do have a, a question, um, and Sue, this is probably a good one for you. Based on the magnitude and depth, how far will this likely be felt and what damage might be incurred? Yeah, I already addressed that a little bit. And as far as the fault goes, there are it's known that there are secondary faults that are in proximity to the faults we know about. So an earthquake this small, as Lucy said, it's, you know, it can be difficult to, to figure out. The shaking that's been reported has been felt out to a distance of about 60 miles or 100 kilometers. 
Uh, most of that information comes from the Did You Feel It system, which that I've seen has remarkably few responses. It's uh, just, I just updated it, Sue. There's over 5,000. Uh, okay. Okay. They're, they're great. There may have been some backlog because they were getting too much information. So, um, yeah, weak, relatively weak shaking would have been felt over most of the greater Los Angeles region, which, you know, has, has an awful lot of people. The most, the strongest reported shaking at this point is what we call intensity five. That's strong enough to knock things off of shelves in the immediate area. It's not generally strong enough to cause any uh, structural damage in our, in our modern built environment. I would say, you know, I, I didn't feel it because I was in the middle of my exercise routine. Um, people felt it though farther away, keep on going east, you get out to San Bernardino and, and Riverside and you're having some people feel it there. It is striking that it, uh, some of the strongest shaking, not surprisingly, but it's right down the west side of Los Angeles, right? Because um, uh, you're gonna get a bit of amplification if you've got deep sediments, which you do along the west side and, and those, it's still pretty close to Malibu. Um, so it seems to have been uh, pretty widely felt even up to intensity, definitely intensity three and some of intensity four, even as far south as, as Irvine. So- uh, To jump back in, I think the system may have been bogged down because so many responses were coming in so quickly. Yeah, there there is felt shaking out to about 200 kilometers and a little bit beyond weak shaking as Lucy suggested, you'll feel it if you're sitting quietly, if you're moving around, you may not notice it, that's common. Uh, there are accounts of shaking at intensity six and above, which starts to you know, maybe crack plaster, but this, this is all preliminary information and there, there's going to be a lot more data that's coming in that, that people will be looking at. Okay. Uh, Ron uh, asks, can you elaborate more on how we've been feeling more quakes? We do have, we have had more magnitude fours in the Southern California area this year, more than average, right? The average being about eight magnitude four sequences. That's the sequences with at least one magnitude four, right? If you have a magnitude six, you trigger lots of magnitude fours. So we're not looking at that. So the separate sequences, long-term average of about eight. So far, we've had 14 in Southern California. Uh, the largest previous year was 13. Notice these numbers are small, however. So yes, we are feeling it, but it's not um, uh, it's not yet statistically significant. Okay? Uh, and and that's that's a big issue. Seismologists look for patterns. Everybody looks for patterns. That why we have myths of earthquake weather and animals and all of these things are us trying to form a pattern in what is inherently a random distribution because we feel better when we know what the pattern is. But when we test the pattern, we can't make it for certain. So yes, we are. We have already had more separate sequences of magnitude fours this year in Southern California than we have seen in the past by one, by one sequence now. Uh, but because it's small number statistics, that doesn't mean we had a fundamental rate and change. It might, we have seen some more and less active time periods in different regions. But we can't say that it, it means that for certain yet. And um, just to jump in, people have looked back at past patterns before large earthquakes, and they've concluded that earthquake activity goes up in a region before a large earthquake. Some people have, have concluded that earthquake activity goes down before a large earthquake. You're sort of looking for patterns in the clouds when you when you know when an earthquake is, and you look back, you can you often find some sort of pattern. And so you know, the question is, do they have any predictive, do patterns have any predictive meaning? And as Lucy said, that when you do the test rigorously, they just don't. Okay. Um, we have a couple of more questions. Uh, had some association of before, but um, the possibility that this is a foreshock, uh, it's uh, the same as any other earthquake in Southern California, which is about 5% of the time, one of the aftershocks gets bigger than the first one, and we change the name and call the first one a foreshock. So 95% chance that we won't. Um, there, the, sorry, I keep interrupting you, but there will be a USGS forecast for this event, an aftershock forecast. I'm not sure if it's up yet, but but there are will be numbers giving the aftershock probabilities and the probabilities 
of a larger event. Right. Important. Thank you. Yes, the USGS creates uh, event pages for every event, and essentially everything you've been asking us, you can find on the event page. Um, but it's uh, and it, it does include when the the numbers get run uh, an aftershock uh, update, um, and then you can keep track of what the aftershocks have been doing, and again the possibility that it's a foreshock. Um, I'm not last seeing. Question. I'm not seeing it yet. Um, it may take about half an hour and the, you know, to look at how many aftershocks are occurring and that lets us refine the, the forecast. Okay. Um, uh, and we can, uh, yes, for those who are uncertain about it, I will, uh, oh, hmm. I thought I could put something in a chat. The, in the question and answer period, uh, if somebody has put up the website, I'm actually not sure I can, uh, oh, I can. Yeah, I can only answer to uh, the host and panelists. Um, Jacob Margolis has raised his hand. Please put the question in the question and answer. We're trying. We we are not yet ready to um, have have uh, active questioning going on because it. We'd rather do it through through the chat. If you're just joining us, everybody, welcome to Good Day LA here at 8 o'clock. We are continuing our earthquake coverage. We did experience a 4.7 magnitude earthquake epicentered in Malibu, about five miles from Westlake Village. We're going to have uh, new information, of course, as it becomes available because the, the magnitude of the quake, it, it continues to change. Mm -hmm. USGS first said 5.1, then it went to 4.6, now it's at 4.7. So we're going to be staying on top of that as we come into our 8 o'clock hour. And we just heard from seismologist Lucy Jones. Uh, answering a bunch of questions, you know, saying that this was, in fact, this has been a more active year when it comes to earthquakes than we've seen in years past. Whether that's statistically significant is still up in the air. Uh, but this earthquake happened at 728 this morning, five miles north of Malibu. The shaking could be felt for up to 60 miles. I've been getting video and uh, and pictures in. We've been getting responses on Twitter. I actually got a number of responses from people who really live all over the place. 